Mora, Lela Moya Honola, we invite and we demand your intervention, the Almighty God, come and be to us. Thank you very much, uh, Chaplain, and uh, I think uh, we have all heard the message. Uh, there is a person who is tasked to do acknowledgement of guests, but at this point in time, I would like to direct or inform uh, Mr. President and distinguished guests that on the 14th of November 2006, under item number CSR 432006, Eguruleni Metropolitan Council adopted three resolutions. The last resolution directed council to adopt April month in which the life and the legacy of the late Comrade Krisani was is to, was to be commemorated and celebrated on an annual basis. So what we are doing here, we are actually implementing the resolution uh, that was adopted in 2006. And I am pleased to announce that out of 11 political parties in council, 10 are here. The other one uh, has submitted an apology but said that uh, best wishes uh, uh, to this event. So without any waste of time, time allocated for this event is two hours. We need to ensure I will request our speakers to be precise because they are allocated five minutes each. The rest of time will be allocated to our keynote a address speaker who is our president of the Republic of South Africa and also president of the African National Congress. Distinguished guests, allow me to call upon the acting premier of the Gauteng Provincial Government, uh, who is here, Ndate uh, Panyaza Lusufi, to come and make a welcome address. Thank you so much, Program Director. Our President, Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa, Comrade Kim Pohani and the family, the leadership in government represented here by various ministers and deputy ministers, the leadership of Ekuruleni municipality represented here by the Executive Mayor, Mzwandi Lemasina, the leadership of the Alliance, the leadership of various organizations that are part of this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, our commitment to a truly non-racial South Africa was seriously tested when they took our beloved leader, Comrade Chris Sani, from us. But we remained committed to non-racialism. Our commitment to reconciliation and to build a better South Africa that we want was also seriously tested when they assassinated our hero, Comrade Krisan. Our love for a peaceful South Africa was further tested when they made us a true communist and a person that loved our people so much. Comrade Krisan. Regardless of these provocations, regardless of the difficulties that we find ourselves, we remain on course to believe 
that a truly non-racial, all-inclusive South Africa is what we want. As we meet this morning, to remember Comrade Chris, as we meet this morning, to honor and salute Comrade Chris, we should remain dedicated and committed to a truly non-racial South Africa. However, Comrade President, yesterday was a sad day for our country. We learned with sadness the passing of a fearless fighter for justice and equality, Comrade Graham Block. Comrade Graham Block represented an era of few yet special activists in the education sector. He was a renowned author, academic, true education activist, but most importantly, he was an embodiment of what the Freedom Charter stands for, the opening of doors of learning and culture for all. As we remember Krisan, we should also remember those that have left this world purely because they wanted us to have a free South Africa. The only remaining task, which is a, busy, which is a difficult task, is to ensure that their legacies are protected and our children will learn about them one day. Because that is very important and that's the only way to defend and protect their legacies. As I take my seat, I want to welcome you all in our province. And I want to reaffirm our commitment as government to protect all those sites that represent those who passed on. We want to affirm our commitment as the provincial government that will do everything possible to protect these sites, but most importantly, to make these sites accessible to our children, because it's through them that their legacies can be protected. Comrade President, we thank you and the executive for really starting a very crucial process that confronts humanity as we stand here. The need to protect all South Africans against COVID-19. The decisions that you have taken, the programs that you have executed, the plans that you have outlined will indeed ensure that our people are protected and we can finally confirm that we care and support our people. We are all welcome and thank you so much for being part of this occasion. To Comrade Chris and his family, Chris Hani will forever remain special in our heart, not now, but forever. Thank you so much. Uh, our next, next, next speaker will be Comrade Nosi Viewe, uh, Makisa Nabula, who, who will give a message of support as an ex MK combatant. Masim Padam selling a tour. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Program Director. Comrade President of the country of the African National Congress and the country, the Republic of South Africa, Comrade Mas Matamela Ramaphosa, Austin Po, and family, Sheria Chris, SG, DSG, I saw the DSG of the African National Congress the treasurer of the African National Congress, the executive mayor 
and host of Ekuruleng, Comrade Mzwandile, Ndate Panyaza, should have started with you, who is hosting us in this province, Comrade Blade Nzimande, the General Secretary of the Communist Party and his deputy, Comrade Soli. I've seen a number of members of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress. I've also seen a number of councillors from Ekuruleng amongst us this morning. And I've looked at the program and I saw that we have quite a number of speakers and the last one being the keynote speaker, the President of the Republic of South Africa. Mine is a very brief one. I will not even read this. I feel I want to speak from the heart. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm very happy that we have this occasion at this time. I heard that there are political leaders of other political parties I recognize your presence. You will understand that for some of us this is a very emotional event. It's an event which takes us back to something which we least expected on an Easter weekend in 1993 when the fascists decided to assassinate Comrade Chris Hani. I call them fascists because to date they've not had the courage of their conviction to come out and fully disclose what happened on that day, what was the plan and what was the end game. And I want to say to my dear comrades who are all here today that the unity of the African National Congress is sacrosanct. Nation building and social cohesion in our country is what should be uppermost in our minds. And if there is no unity amongst ourselves who will not be able to build this country. And our children in the near future will spit on our graves. Men and women have died fighting for the liberation of this country. When people talk about Kome Chris, actually I was simple. I think we owe it to you. We owe it to you to thank you, not just for keeping the flag of Comrade Chris Hani flying up since his death, no. For everything you did for Chris Hani, starting from the day you met with him in Lesotho, right up until the man passed on. Thank you. Thank you. And sometimes when people look at women who are attached to leaders, they see appendages of those men. What they do not know is the role which you've played behind the scenes. I'm saying this because I know, I know that everything which Comrade Chris did, he had a very dependable ally and a courier in you. He could send you from Lesotho to Lusaka to convey things which some of us wouldn't have been able to do. Thank you to you. Thank you. Comrade Chris was a commissar. He was a chief of staff of Umkondo season. But I just want us to remind ourselves, I'm, I'm happy because I saw my comrades in uniform here, that Umkondo season. The glorious army we served, 
the glorious army which trained us, the glorious army we belonged to. That army was not a military, it was a political military entity of the African National Congress. I just want us to, to, to keep on going back to our politics and what we were taught, that if your military strategy is not informed by politics, we are not rebels. We are not those rebels who fought us in the bush, fighting a war which had nothing to do with them, of UNITA. We are no rebels which fought against us and assisted the enemy to eliminate our people. No. We in the African National Congress, Oliver Tambo and his leadership made sure that we were well rooted in the politics of the African National Congress, in the strategy and tactics of the African National Congress, so that we understand that the military was a tactic which served the strategy, the overall strategy of fighting for the liberation of the people of South Africa. So Comrade Chris was a politician, he was a military man, a soldier of Mkondo, but of course deeply rooted and of course a communist Comrade Blade. As I stepped down, Comrade Chris led from the front, comrades. It doesn't matter if you talked about Umkata Shinga in Utini in the camps, Comrade Chris was there. It doesn't matter that uh, you had UNITA which was attacking his soldiers, Comrade Chris, when he had an opportunity, would always find time to visit his soldiers in the camps, and this is what he taught us. So, comrades, all that he did because up in his mind he knew that we were fighting a political struggle a political struggle a battle to liberate the people of south africa from the racist regime however now we have a responsibility to keep our country united we have a responsibility to make sure that there is nation building in this country and social cohesion. We have a responsibility that our children can learn from us about everything which Chris Hani stood for. Comrades, when Comrade Chris Hani died, you all know, I was talking to some of the guys as we were driving here and I asked them, how old were you in 1993? And the one said he was doing standard six. We worked together. He said, you were doing standard six? Just going to teach you a bit about the history of the, the road from here to the CBD. The things which happened on the day we were bearing Comrade Chris. How our people bent the fields here. Today the fields are green. Because in South Africa there is freedom. Then they were brown, there was fire everywhere because the people of South Africa, the majority, were angry. Now there's no need for that anger anymore. Our anger should be directed at ending poverty and squalor amongst our people. That's where we should be spending our energy on, ending poverty, squalor and criminality, of course, and criminality, of course. Because our people, women, young women, are dying every day, murdered by their partners. So my plea is that in the name of Comrade Chris, in the name of Tembisile, in the name of Chonyane, in the name of that great revolutionary, that communist, please, let's try to work together, hold hands, and take this country forward. Let us take this country forward. These divisions which you read about and you hear about are not going to help us to build South Africa. Comrades and colleagues, I beg 
for the sake of future generations. I beg for the sake of our children that we should all on this grave commit ourselves to continue with the program Kakomlete Chris. Thank you, Mr. President, for being here. Thank you, Secretary General, for being here. And thank you to the members of the NEC who are here today. This day should serve as a day of rededication to the ideals Comrade Chris committed himself to. Thank you. Thank you. Sia Buled. From Kosatu, the second uh, deputy president of Kosatu, Bapaba Sevens, Kosatu Bapaba Sevens, Sumpagam Senge Gulo, Magaya Estate. Amanda. Thank you, Program Director. The President of the ANC, Ndate Matamela, the General Secretary of the SACP, Comrade Blade, Medimpoli family, Alliance leaders and activists who are present here today, and the Mayor of Ekuruleni, Ndate Mzwandile Masina, with the host, um, Ndate Panyaza, and dear comrades. We still remember vividly the day on which the bullet that ended the life of comrade Chris was shot. We recall the anger, the pain, and the unprecedented loss we all suffered as a nation and as this alliance. A racist full of hatred and prejudice came into this country in collusion with other racists like Clive Debbie Lewis to brutally end a life that was the key champion of a true revolutionary momentum for a new South Africa. Comrade Chris was murdered on cold blood by the right wing who, for now, we are still waiting for the truth to be told. From Chris Honey and uh, his selfless life of the revolution, workers learned the bravery, honesty, and taking responsibility uh, as taking responsibility are the cardinal pillars of any revolution. In all well-known well incident, Comrade Chris risked his life by challenging the leadership of the ANC in the exile about their living conditions compared to those of the ordinary soldiers and cadres, uh, which almost cost his life. And this important lesson emphasized to us that bravery, honesty, and selflessness are key to qualities of leadership. Without this, we shall not be able to confront and defeat the current crisis and the exemplary of the working class. Comrades, COSATU held its special Central Executive Committee over the past four days, and it has reflected on the international and domestic balance of forces. As we were seeking to answer the question, how far are we with the NDR, 
and the struggles against the defeat of the legacy of apartheid. The CEC was clear that COSATU will vote for the ANC come the elections because it's clear that with all its challenges, the ANC and the Alliance are best placed to advance the NDR, but do not need to deliberately focus on some very difficult issues uh, collectively. Amongst them, the issue of corruption, as extreme inequalities, unemployment, retrenchments, poverty, hunger and gender-based violence. More decisiveness on the vaccination of the, uh, on the COVID-19 pandemic. Comrades, we call, we also wish to call on all Alliance partners to take seriously the task of building unity renewing our organizations and mobilizing our people for fundamental transformation. And the patience of our people is not unlimited. And we reflect both policy failures and lack of political will to rise to the occasion. We affirm as COSATU the importance of the ANC NEC decision for narrow selfish interests, um, the decision that was taken, which was charged with corruption, that uh, the issue on the step down immediately, and we cannot, we say we cannot be led by questionable people who put the name of the organization into disrepute. We also must be bold and decisive in transforming the institution of higher learning to accommodate and reflect the demographics of our society. And this sophisticated exclusion of students, particularly from previously disadvantaged communities, must stop and the ministry must act decisively on both access and the content of the curriculum to transform our society and design a new system of education for the development. The SACP, ANC and COSATU have a duty to deepen non-racialism and build society in diversity. The African struggle is our struggle, comrades. We cannot be selective or part-time in this movement. That is the single biggest breakthrough for our revolution and our country's uh, foreign policy because we are Africans and on the African continent. Though we don't say this much often, has the illusion we are semi-Africans, semi-Europeans, in a way the media and education and our lifestyles projects us. From the very CEC, these are the campaigns that we are calling for, which will be taken care of by the upcoming congresses, we're going to have conferences in our nine provinces and the gender conference this year, which will be mapping up the way forward to the Central Committee later in September. So these are the campaigns that we would, alongside with our allies, make sure that we work on. The unemployment and retrenchments attack on the collective bargaining and for the workers' rights, the gender-based violence and corruption. Those are the major, major campaigns that we would 
one to four times with our allies. And I would then thank the organizer for the day and uh, the invitation that has been uh, forwarded to the Federation. Amandra. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy, uh, uh, Second Deputy President of uh, COSATU. Kikubile uh, Murud, IMC, as we are preparing to come here, uh, let me, as uh, our sister is preparing herself to come to the podium, let me take this Yatsiba Rudor Pog. Yatsiba Rudor Pog. Let us officially acknowledge them who are their part and parcel of this event. You pricked our consciences. You told us how well you lived with the Gobis, uh, and from time to time you wanted them to be here. They are here, Ausidimpo. That's why I said taking this podium and officially acknowledging them. Because we welcome everybody, but we are not a listener. So uh, before we send the angel, we love you. Do you want to sing the song, Mr. Chaplain? Do you want to sing the song, Mr. Chaplain? Comrade Paul T.G., Ndadeli Supi, Comrade Deputy S.G., the Secretary General of the ANC, NEC members, Kikopalin Sarele Kibuyes Hwases Telele, as my grandmother would say, all protocol observed. I would like to acknowledge the Ngobi family who are here with us. The master of ceremonies today, I don't know whether he was in my house last night when I thought I was going to raise something that most of the young people, even the elderly one, do not know about why we are here today. Um, a resolution was passed, as she rightly says. It was called Boxberg Municipality then. Comrade Eric Kaya was the mayor. And I remember some of the councillors from the ANC was the now chairman of the ANC, Dade Mantage. This resolution that was passed what was strange or very interesting at the time, it was supported by all political parties in the council. 
Now you remember at that time, all the political parties were represented in the council. And I must say, Master of Ceremonies, I am very happy and proud that the other political parties have been invited today. This is the only way we can build a united South Africa. Yes, we might have different views of how to get from point A to point B, but at the end of the day, our interests are the same. We want to live in a free, prosperous South Africa. And I want to welcome all the opposition parties. Thank you very much for honoring us. When I say us, I mean uh, the organizers of the function. Um, I want to touch on something very sensitive. But as you know, at age 73, I have nothing to lose. I'm not looking for a job. I don't want a position in the political party. So I think I'm the only one who has been given permission to say how I feel. And because of my age, there'll be no disciplinary hearing for me. <laughs> we have in the ANC, the most brilliant cadres, very, very clever, extremely clever. I have never ever met people who are so clever, dedicated to the ANC, want to see us living in a better country. However, there is a mistake that we all did from 94 all the ANC leadership should take responsibility and we are not going to point fingers here. We failed on one thing. We did not take them to political school. The political school that was done over the years in exile, as Comrade Nosidwe said, taught people discipline, taught us humility, taught us not to speak out of ten. As I'm talking to today, everybody who is a member of the ANC becomes a spokesperson of the ANC. And you are confusing us as ordinary branch members. We do not know who to listen to. And I appeal to the leadership, alliance, and people of who love this country that I suggest our glorious movement should change the way they operate. Let's hear one person speak on behalf of the ANC. Otherwise, if a branch member from Tofim Baba in Chris's village make a statement on national issues, somebody in Guazulu, somebody in Lady Brand. You are confusing us as the ordinary members. I'm glad I'm 73, so I can't be confused. I know what ANC stands for. Uh, Comrade President, I am honored that you are here, and I'm sure all of us are honored. He's very busy, but uh, he found time to be with us here. I have a, a passion for the young people. I've heard you speak about the youth and that they have to be empowered. I'm not going to repeat myself, you know what's happening in the country, that we have the most qualified children, but they don't have jobs. I was approached by some young people, professionals, I don't know, in their own field, that they wanted to do a documentary on Chris. Because they told me, they have checked, and there is nothing, and this is, we are here for, this is 28 years. And we have been talking the same thing for the last 28 years. But for those who are younger, even some of you here, 
I think when Chris died, he must have been two years old or four years old. So I thought that was a brilliant idea coming from the young people who want to document the history of Chris and many other uh, leaders. And I hope Comrade Nati. Oh, you are there? Oh, okay. Comrade Nati, these children, the report they gave me was the officials. Remember, we don't deal with ministers, we don't deal with DGs, but we deal with officials. But apparently, the officials closed the door on their faces. Well, that's where our political education comes in. However, uh, Comrade Nati, the, the back stops at your door. So um, I hope and pray you look into it. I normally don't want to remark on speeches that were made by people who spoke before me. But I feel very strong about the statement that was made here about whatever set aside, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm of the strong view that we are standing here Chris, and Chris was a unifier. I would suggest let's not bring the discussions from the NEC onto this function. That's my plea. Here we are going to be united because we are all ANC. We should not have factions. Now, if you bring the NEC discussions when we are not part of the NEC, I think you are dividing us more. Please, let's not do that. Let's support whatever decisions are taken, but let's not bring them here. I respect my husband, and you all know he was a unifier. He didn't believe in dividing people. So let's use this occasion to be one thing, to go back to what the ANC of Tambo, Mandela was, I plead. Uh, the last thing that I want to do, I hope I didn't finish my five minutes. I still have. Yes. I received a message from a cousin of mine, I want to read it to you. She sent it this morning. She normally thinks I am an emotional person, but I can tell you I'm not emotional when it's unnecessary. Before I go further, I would like to thank the Deputy Secretary General of the ANC. She's a leader. She's a mother, she's a unifier. Come here, Jesse. I don't want to speak on your grave. I want to tell it straight into your face. Without some of the things that you do, this ANC will be here. Please keep it up. This is what my cousin wrote, and I would like to share this with you. Uh, the writer is unknown. It reads as follows. You never said goodbye. You never said I am leaving. You never said goodbye. You have gone before I knew it. And only God knew why. A million times I needed you. A million times I cried. If love alone could have saved you, you never would have died. In life, I loved you dearly. In death, I love you still. In my heart, you hold a place that no one will ever feel. It broke my heart to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of me went with you the day God took you home. 
So anyway, then I am not care about them. Can you tell me Amanda. Uh, thank you very much, uh, sorry, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Chaplain Kupoyemise, uh, General Secretary of the South African Communist Party, Correct Blade in the Monday. Amanda, Amanda, long live the memory of Comrade Chris and long live. Long live the unity of the African National Congress and the Alliance. Long live. Long live. Amanda. Uh, Comrade President of the ANC and the Republic, Comrade Matamela Ramaphosa, and all the ANC officials who are here, uh, Medimpo, of course, we check up with Chris. We really appreciate all the time your support and your presence here and the family, the Hani family. Let me also recognize the Gobi family to always say to you, we love you, we honor you, we treasure you. Let me also greet Comrade Solima Paila on <coughs> leading the SACP is as this first deputy general secretary, Comrade Tipe of Kosatu, Comrade Nosviwa, Mapisa Mabula, and all the former commanders and commissars, Zomkondo Wesiso, Comrade Mzwandile, our mayor of Egruleni, and all the comrades who are here. We just want to say today, as we stand here, 28 years we've been coming here. We've come here to honor once more the memory of Comrade Krisani, our late General Secretary as the SACP, cowardly assassinated on this day. First message we want to say, Comrade Chris was our leader but we dare not forget Comrade Chris was a husband and a father and a brother and a cousin, a family man. To Yanus Walush and Darby Lewis, they might have killed the communist, but what they, we also want everyone to know, they also killed a husband and a father, a human being, and indeed, Putin as much you put Chris, he really was a human being. Very caring, would never forget people often that he had met and was in the struggle with his whole heart. Not for himself, but for the overwhelming majority of our people. That's why we say today, the fact that the whole truth has not come out about the circumstances that led to his assassination Yanus Walush must rot in jail. I see a short end of Gobas name is UASZB. That's all. We just want the truth. It's not because we have got we have we have got this perpetual bitterness. Yes, they took Chris from us. We are not happy about that, but we want the whole truth. That's why we remain strongly opposed to the release of Yanus Walush. Today also, Austin, for we take your warning, but at the same time, it's important that we speak the truth, like the person we are remembering. 
Those who are coming out today saying they've got information about the assassination of Comrade Chris, but never went to the TRC, never went to any law enforcement structure, they are being irresponsible and reckless, and we would like to condemn that very strongly as the SACP. In fact, they are acting in a factionalist fashion. We want to say today, as one of our most important messages, that our message as the SACP today is that, in honor of Comrade Chris, let's defend the unity of our movement. Starting with the African National Congress first. Today, I was thinking, oh, you are right, that's what Comrade Chris was about, the unity of the movement. That's why we support the decision of the ANC to say MKMVA and MK Council must unite. We as the SACP also, we will be party to that. Not for anything. Umkwato was formed as a joint army of the ANC and the South African Communist Party. The memory of MK is both is treasured by the ANC and by us as South African communists. We support that. We also want to say that we must, standing here, given who Comrade Chris was, that we condemn very strongly the factionalist abuse of the name of Umkondo Wesis. MK! MK would never mobilize in support of some leaders against other leaders of the African National Congress or the Alliance. Those of us who were here inside the country in the democratic movement, I grew up in Guazulu Natal, late 80s and early 90s, we were actually going some houses where brain matter of children was spilled because of counter-revolutionary violence of the National Party government and its surrogates. Were it not because of the MK commanders and the commissars and some of the MK soldiers who helped us to build self-defense units, we will not be having a free South Africa today. Because that counter-revolutionary war was meant at preventing the ANC from re-establishing itself and to frustrate a transition to a democratic South Africa. Where MK commanders at the time to perfectionalists as some of our comrades in the MK MVA were doing, we would never be free today. We, we condemn that. Don't abuse the honor and memory of Mkondo Wesizu to pursue factionalist battles and want to protect MK as if it was a private army of some leaders of the African National Congress and their lines. We have to say that. Isange Isabe, as a comrade was saying, and other comrades to raise issues. We want to say all cadres, all revolutionaries, stand up and defend the ANC when it is faced with serious challenges of unity. No communist must celebrate factionalism and divisions in the ANC. Every good communist is for the unity of the movement. That's why as the SNCP today, we support the decisions that have been taken by the ANC and we must defend them, not because we interfere in the affairs of the African National Congress, but because the ANC is us. We are the ANC. We must defend this ANC and this ANC is not for sale. Yeah. Wait, Lombud. Wait. There will be no progress in this country if the ANC remains divided. That's why we are saying true commanders and fundis, no commissar, former bomb can't act, can't act in the manner in which some of our MKMVA comrades are doing. You are actually causing confusion and misrepresenting. In fact, it's an insult to the memory of someone like Comrade Krisan who made the supreme sacrifice on the 10th of April 1993 for the sake of the future of this country. So then must we today, as I conclude, defend the unity of the ANC, the unity of the alliance. 
which is an alliance that we, we affirm must reconfigure and be able to be an alliance structure to deal with the challenges of the time. We are glad, Kosafi, we have taken the decision we have taken to reaffirm your support for the ANC. The SACP, we are doing the same today. But we do need to deal with the challenges that we have and not run away from them. So if we unite the ANC, we must also unite to overcome the scourge of gender-based violence, to defeat the scourge pandemic we are facing of COVID-19, the violence generally in society, criminality, drug abuse. Without a strong ANC and an alliance, we are not going to be able to do these kinds of things. So do we also, as we end, appreciate the decision taken by SADC to defend and deal with what Mozambique and deal what is happening in that country so that we are actually able to have a stable SADC. With those words, let me end. President, I'm not out of order, but I'm under a strict instruction. I'm here as General Secretary of the SACP, but to say nevertheless to the Mayor and the people of Werulain, who have started the feasibility study this month for the establishment of the university here in Werulain, wow. as announced by the President. So you will get your university in memory of Utonya. Amanda! Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me call upon before Ndiza uh, Mshonishwa, Minister Natim Tetra, Zatelu Kamu, Asugumisu Minister Nepoam, and then Minister Zosa as our introducer, our keynote address speaker, who is the President of the Republic of South Africa and the President of the ANC. Good morning, comrades! Thank you very much.
Acting Premier of Gauté, uh, Mr. Hendrik Banyazal Sufi. <laughs> Uh, the Executive Mayor of uh, Evruleni Metro, Councillor Massina, uh, our sitting Paul and the family, the family of uh, Ngobi, as we are in uh, Thomas Ngobi Memorial Park uh, here, distinguished guests, members of the media, the opposition parties who are here from Eburulene. The watershed resolution of Eburulene Metro in 2006 saw people coming here every year annually to remember the legacy of Comrade Chris Hardy, as we are doing today. <clears throat> In, in March 2017, the then Department of Arts and Culture declared this place as the National Heritage Site. So, comrades and compatriots, this is a national shrine, which we are in, a monument by law and uh, part of the resistance and liberation heritage route. So it is protected by law and that was done through the agency of the department, uh, the South African Heritage Resource Agency. And one of the agencies of the department is the National Video Foundation, National Film and Video Foundation and the uh, Aus Dimpo, that's the, the foundation which we are going to direct these young people. A very efficient agency of the department, these young people, uh, to ensure that the film of Comrade Chris and the documentary is done. It is going to be done. Because Comrade Chris Ani uh, is declared by law here. Uh, if I may bore you, it's under the National Heritage Resources Act, number 25 of 1999. So he is protected by law uh, in everything which we are doing. So today, we are gathered here to celebrate the life of a patriot. An African patriot and internationalist, whose life was brutally cut short by a racist and criminal who came to our country seeking asylum. Our act of generosity made him to think that he can decide on the fate and the destiny of this country. How wrong he was. South Africans have always known what they wanted to do. They have known what future they want for their country. The patriot we are commemorating today in many respects embodied the finest traditions of our Revolutionary Alliance, which brings together the African National Congress, the South African Communist Party, and the Congress of South African Trade Unions. An alliance that was not conceived in the boardrooms or documents signed by leaders in conferences, as O.R. would have said, an alliance that was conceived in the trenches and the battlefields of our country, of our neighboring countries, in our quest to set our country free. 
being a leading officer in the ranks of Umkondo Wesizwe, he was a commanding officer of rare quality and who always led from the front within our people's army. His personal warmth, everyone who has met him would attest to that. Humanity and magnetic charisma had earned him the respect and love of all who had come into contact with him. Despite the regard he had, one amongst comrades, Comrade Krisani, never became conceited or arrogant. There is no one who is best positioned to share with the public and South Africans and the world at large who Chris Hane was because when he was murdered, he was a general secretary of the Communist Party who would confer from time to time with a very young, handsome secretary general of the ANC at the time. And it's that secretary general of the ANC whom I'm here to ask to come to the fore and, and talk to us. Uh, he's the president today of the ANC. Uh, he's the president of the Republic of South Africa. Comrade Madamela Cyril Ramaphosa, president of the ANC. Today he's here in that camp. Comrade President, May we all for you. Thank you very much. ACP Viva 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 Kosatu Viva Viva Long live the spirit of Chris Hani Long live Long live Thank you comrades let's be seated Program director Aus Dimpo Hani who still looks as young as when she met comrades comrade Chris Hani the Gobi family and the entire Hani family as well. The officials of the African National Congress as represented here by the Secretary General, Comrade Ace Makashule, the Deputy Secretary General, Comrade Jesse Duarte, and the Treasurer General, Comrade Paul Mashatile and officials of the SACP represented here by Uno Bala, Comrade Blayton Dimande and Deputy Secretary Oko Nalapa who is taking the work of the SACP forward, Comrade Swalima Baila. Office bearers of Kosatu and other leaders represented here by Os Luisa. The executive mayor of Ekuruleni, Comrade Mzwandi Lemasina, who, as we were walking in, was telling me that Ekuruleni is bright, it's shining. It's the only metro that get, got a complete clean audit. <laughs> Provincial Deputy Chairperson of the ANC, Comrade Lisufi and other PEC members, and the regional leadership 
of uh, both the African National Congress as well as COSATU and the SACP, councillors of the Ekuruleni Metro who are here in attendance, and the leaders of various political parties in the Metro, and comrades and friends. I want to start off by thanking the councillors of Ekuruleni Metro for having declared and taken a decision to honor our leader, o Comrade Chris Hani, in the way that we are doing today. Comrades, our commemoration of Chris Hani does take place under conditions and circumstances which are not of our choosing. There would have been many, many more of us here today. But COVID-19 has necessitated that we meet in this fashion. As we know, this virus has swept across the whole world, staggering and uh, devastating economies of various countries and uh, instigating historically unprecedented public health and economic crisis that we never thought imaginable. Every part of the world economy is experiencing upheaval, resulting in a lot of hardships for ordinary people and working people in the form of unemployment and poverty. And it has exacerbated the inequalities that exist in many societies, but more especially in ours. The economic recession that is unfolding from COVID-19 is uh, perhaps the deepest since World War II. In the midst of this global challenge, Comrade Chris would have inspired us not to lose hope. He would have said to us, despondency and losing hope solves no problems and brings no glory to any nation. This year, our commemoration is linked with 150 years celebration of two iconic figures of our struggle for freedom and social progress. We celebrate the lives of Uma Mushalot Makweke, as well as Ujon Langalibalela Mafuguzela Dube. Accordingly, the movement in many ways had a deep sense of occasion to dedicate this year to Mama Charlotte Matoyeke and Chris Hani being a descendant of these gi giants and stalwarts of our revolution did throughout his life follow in the footsteps of these giants and left no stone unturned to take our struggle forward. Now, the struggles of these three iconic figures of our country have left us a legacy of never to allow your circumstances to determine your destiny. We meet here to remember and honor a great son of our soil. We are also here as a sign of remembrance to one who was among the most admired he was also one of the most beloved and without a doubt one of the most extraordinary of our revolutionary comrades. Comrade Chris Hani was one of those people who was liked immediately. As you met him, encountered him, you immediately liked him. And this is what happened to me when I first met him. And this happened because of his simplicity because of his character, his naturalness, and his comradely attitude, but also his personality. But he was also one of those comrades who was very original, even when one had yet to learn of his other characteristics and unique features and virtues. We meet here to recall the enormous contribution 
that Comrade Chris made to the struggle of the freedom of our people. We remember his kindness, his selflessness, his modesty, but we also remember his intellect and his unwavering courage. Comrade Chris Harney's extraordinary character was made up of virtues that are rarely found together. He stood out as an unsurpassed person of action. But he was not only that, he was also a person of visionary intelligence and a profound thinker in our movement. He was a man of ideas, but at the same time, he was also a man of action. Now, all these amazing attributes were combined within him. He was a person of total integrity and a person of a high sense of humor, of absolute sincerity, a person in whose conduct not one stain could be found. He constituted through his values what can be called a truly model revolutionary. But he was also an outstanding and courageous soldier and a disciplined cadre. Comrade Nosiviwe spoke about their soldiering together. And what you hear, continue to hear about Comrade Chris, about his exploits as a soldier, is that he was more than a disciplined soldier. He was a leader who put the interests of the people above his own. He put the interests of the organizations that he belonged to above his own. He thought more about what are the interests of our people and what are the interests of the organization. The ANC, Umkonto Wesizwe, and the SACP. He did not allow himself to be captured by other interests. If Comrade Chris was ever captured, he was only captured by the African National Congress, Nkonte Wesizwe, and the SACP. Those were the only organizations that captured him. He put the well-being and the safety of the people before his own. And when we say Comrade Chris was a giant of our struggle, we say so because this was rightfully earned. It earned him his place among the most outstanding leaders of our movement. And when we speak about him, we unashamedly put his name and insert his name amongst the names of Comrade Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Oliver Tambo, Mokavun Beki, Moses Kotani, Lillian Goy. Dorothy Nyembe, Joe Slovo, Ahmed Kathrada, Winnie Matigizela Mandela, and many others. That is where Comrade Chris belongs. That is why we say, when we think of his life, and today gives us that opportunity to think of his life, this is, should not just be a get-together of ourselves as comrades to see our to see each other amongst the COVID pandemic. It is about to reflect and to think about one of our own who dedicated his life to the struggle of our people. We think of his conduct in relation to his commitment to the struggle and that he was a most extra extraordinary human being able to unite his personality, not only the characteristics of the man of action, but also the man of ideas, as to be counted amongst the best our movement has produced. Such great attributes which his, this, his movement instilled and bestowed on him are rarely found. He was molded and almost perfected.
because there's no one who is perfect. By the ANC and his party, the SACP. Now, as we gather here, we recall with great anguish and great sorrow the horrific act of racial hatred that ended his life on the eve of our freedom. For the masses of our people, this was the darkest moment before our democratic dawn. The heart of the nation had been pierced and it had been ripped apart. The country was bleeding following his cruel assassination. And his assassination reverberated and resounded throughout the world, not in our country only. Wallace and Darby Lewis insisted that they had hoped the assassination would so destabilize the negotiations that were ongoing and shut our path to freedom. What stopped our country from descending into civil war after Comrade Chris's assassination was the manner in which the ANC leadership gave leadership to the country and the way in which Comrade Madiba addressed the nation at a most trying and dangerous hour. Madiba said, as he addressed us, today an unforgivable crime has been committed a white man full of prejudice and hate came to our country and committed a deed so foul that our whole nation now tetters on the brink of disaster. He continued to say, a white woman of Africana origin risked her life so that we may know and bring to justice the assassin. Our decisions and action will determine whether we use our pain, our grief, and our outrage to move forward to what is the only lasting solution to our country, an elected government of the people and for the people. And we must not let the man who worships war and those who lust after blood precipitate actions that will plunge our country into the precipice. Now, some of us who were around know that that was the moment when power passed from de Klerk to Comrade Madiba, who became the de facto president of South Africa, as it became clear to all and sundry that it was only the ANC that could hold the country together. Comrade Chris, in many ways, and in many respects, embodies or embodied the finest traditions of our revolutionary alliance, which brings together the ANC, the party, and COSATU. But what are these traditions? that are so well embodied in the life of Comrade Chris Hani. They are the traditions of unity, traditions of forever seeking to renew his organization, the African National Congress, traditions of integrity, honesty, service to the people. And as we have heard today, Comrade Chris was a unifier, but above anything else, he was a nation builder. Even as a communist, he was the quintessential nation builder. He was a champion of non-racialism and non-sexism, deeply committed to breaking down the barriers that had long kept our people apart. He was not the kind of leader who through reckless behavior, indiscipline, and self-serving actions would divide his movement and polarize the nation. That was not Chris. He embodied the revolutionary qualities 
that we need in our leaders today. He was not afraid to ra raise concerns about the state of his movement and also the conduct of his leaders. He was able to clearly articulate the weaknesses in our strategy or the shortcomings in its implementation. He was always clear, forthright, honest and articulate. He did so precisely so that we could correct our errors and build the movement as a stronger, more effective instrument of freedom for our people. He did so not to divide the ANC, but to unite it around a common understanding of the tasks of the moment and the actions that these tasks demand. For Chris Harney, critical, honest debate was a necessary condition for unity, but also for organizational renewal which was also a necessary condition for progress. We must also do so not to divide the organization or to demoralize our membership. We must also follow in Comrade Chris's footsteps because this is what a revolutionary movement does, to be able to be critical and honest about dealing with the issues that beset it. Once we have analyzed our challenges, once we have a common understanding of what causes and manifests these problems that, and challenges we face, we must take concrete action to address them. But in doing so, we need to act together. And today it's important that this alliance that Comrade Chris so dedicated his life to must always act together. And of course there are many challenges, but it is in acting together that we are able to forge the type of unity that Oliver Tambo spoke about also. In 1980 when he said, the need for the unity of the patriotic and democratic of our country has never been greater than it is today. Our unity has to be based on honesty amongst ourselves, the courage to face reality, adherence to what has been agreed upon, and also to principle. These words were spoken over three decades ago. Perfectly, they perfectly capture the central task of the democratic movement that is difficult time now that we are going through. Now, Comrade Chris Hani would have been the first to say, we need to be honest amongst ourselves. The ANC cannot fulfill its historic mission if it is divided. It has a responsibility not only to be united in itself, but also to unite society behind a program of fundamental and social and economic change. We can only advance the interests of the people of South Africa as a whole when the African National Congress itself is united, when the Alliance is united and working together. Now, this ceremony is another reminder of the journey of our democratic dispensation. A journey that has seen South Africa rise in the most profound of ways. Great giants such as Chris have shaped our future as a country, and this we dare not forget. There's no doubt that Chris has inspired this movement to internalize the fact that every challenge is surmountable. The many challenges we face as a country today 
will be overcome. The coronavirus that we are facing will be brought under control and defeated. Indeed, the socio-economic misfortunes of inequality, unemployment and poverty can never be permanent and go on forever. If we are united as a movement and as an alliance, we will be able to come up with clear strategies and plans to overcome inequality, poverty and unemployment. And in addition, corruption will equally be overcome as long as we act on it and as long as we work together to bring an end to corruption. So therefore, when we talk about Chris Hani, we refer to an indomitable spirit of resilience, of courage to provide solutions to the most pressing of matters. And as a communist, Chris Hani embraced the science of deep analysis and understanding of the reality of the condition under which our people live. Therefore, he was averse to share populism that is also anchored on oversimplification of the reality that our people live under. The plight of the working class and its role in shaping a better world were never out of sight of Comrade Chris's analysis. And one of the things that many of us remember so acutely and clearly about Comrade Chris was his aversion and uh, how he despised materialistic lifestyle tendencies that seem to have gotten grip of so many amongst us. When we came out of the 54th National Conference, we embarked on a national pilgrimage where we wanted to go to many sites in our country where the past leaders of our great movement are resting. It also brings us to this resting place. This resting place where Comrade Chris, where Comrade Thomas and Kobe is resting. And we continue to do so, to embark on this pilgrimage in order to share with our young people that we are riding on the shoulders of giants. This organization is our heritage, the ANC, and has to be protected at all material times. But we also have to protect the memory of our leaders and the contribution that they have made. This sacred place, and I call this a sacred place, should inspire young people to learn the history of our revolution, to learn about the contributions that have been made by many who have come before us. It should inspire them to embrace the best values and principles of our movement. And indeed, it should inspire them to be robust like Chris Hani and never shy away from serving the people of South Africa. We come to this resting place in the year of Uma Mushalot Makweke, a pioneer of many women's struggles, both in the organization and in broader society. A few days ago, I had the privilege of going to the Eastern Cape, where she spent a better part of her life. And I was awed by the manner in which the people of that area still remember the contributions that she made 150 years ago. But by being here, we are also involved in a dialogue that calls for serious reflection on how we ensure that there, is, there are solutions to various other challenges that we face the economic recovery and reconstruction challenge, a dialogue that calls on us 
to work together to find solutions to improve the lives of our people. And there is another dialogue, which is about how men should fight against the scourge of gender-based violence, a task that Comrade Chris also dedicated himself. And when we invoke the names of Chris Hani and Umama Shalot Makoke, we are engaged in these types of dialogues. And we are also engaged, as I said earlier, in also inspiring the young people of our country that they should emulate these great leaders of our struggle and learn from them. But more importantly, that we who are still around should see how best we emulate them and follow in, this, in their footsteps. It is a dialogue that we must get involved in, all of us. At a time like this, Comrade Chris Hani would have said to us, our freedom is priceless. We should jealously guard it for the sake of our children and the future generations to come. The difficulties of the moment, he would have said, should not deter us from the efforts of realizing our strategic goal of a united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous South Africa. None but ourselves can do this. And I want to conclude by reminding us about what Nelson Mandela, our leader, said when we laid Comrade Chris to rest. And he said, we worked together in the National Executive Committee of the ANC. We had vigorous debates and an intense exchange of ideas. You were completely unafraid. No task was too small for you to perform. Your ready smile and warm friendship was a source of strength and companionship. You lived in my home and I loved you like the true sign you were. In our heart, as in the hearts of all our people, you are irreplaceable. We have been struck a blow that wounds so deeply that the scars will remain forever. You laid down your life so that we may know freedom. No greater sacrifice is possible. He continued, we lay you to rest with the pledge that the day of freedom you lived and died for will dawn. We all owe you a debt that can only be repaid through the achievement of the liberation of our people, which was the passion of your life. Fighter, revolutionary, soldier for peace, we mourn deeply for you. You will remain in our hearts forever. I'd like to say that the spirit of Chris Hani will live on if we unite rather than divide. If we work together to destroy the demon of division amongst us. Comrade Chris Hani will continue living in our hearts and in our minds if we put the interests of our people above our own personal interests. I'm glad to be here to walk down this memory lane and remember Chris, who was a good comrade, a leader, and a friend. Long live the spirit of Chris Hardy, long, long live. Thank you very much. Study choir, sir. Study choir, choir, choir. Study choir, study choir. Order, please. Order, order. Study choir. Masizo Sugubisa, O Executive Mayor, as a devote of thanks. <laughs>